spoiler warning. The following cinematic contains scenes from major plot points that will not occur until halfway into the game or later. Viewer discretion is advised. Sega. Welcome everybody to Let's Play Valkyria Chronicles. I am your host, Alexander Frost, and this is the glorious first episode. Now, before we begin, let me run through all this stuff here. Uh, install is probably one that you noticed right away. Installed is because, like a few other games that came out early for the PS3, it's pretty big. And as a result, it can have very long load times, so to uh, help along with that, there's an option here to let you install part of the data on the hard drive so that you cut down your loading times. Extras? What is that? I have no idea. Ah! This, boys and girls, refers to the downloadable content available for the game, which I do not have. I have not procured it simply because I want to finish the main game before I play any of the extra stuff. Okay. Options. Action camera up, down, reverse and, reverse and normal. I'll keep it on normal. Action cam left, right. Keep it on normal. Target cam left, right, up, down, yada, yada. We will keep the subtitles on because sometimes... You know what? I just like to read the subtitles. I don't care what anyone else says. Now, yes, you can put the, the language set from English to Japanese or back. I am keeping it on English. Because unlike some games say, Samurai Warriors, for example, even though I love the game to death, some of the characters' voice acting in Samurai Warriors was kind of... Uh, it was hit and miss. But for this game, every character is spot on. They do a very good job. They have voice actors who are professional, who get into the roles, and do just an absolutely wonderful job. Now, one thing I want to point out is... This game will wrap, much like Fallout, this game will rapidly shift between light and dark, making it either too hard to see, or in either being easy to see, or no, how do I don't want to say it? Either it's hard to see because it's too bright, or hard to see because it's too dark. There is not much I can do about that, I'm afraid. Now, this game was, came out early enough that it does not actually have 
any trophies, so I don't have to worry about that. I can just use my normal gaming profile. So with that, let us begin. The year was 1935 EC. Two powers controlled the continent. In the east, the sun rose over the autocratic East European Imperial Alliance, otherwise known as the Empire. In the west, a network of loosely allied democracies formed the Atlantic Federation. Both powers depended on a precious mineral ragnite for their survival, and its growing scarcity led to the inevitable war. Hostilities began in the East when the Empire aggressively crossed their western border. The Atlantic Federation responded, and the Second European War was on. The Empire, with its vast military superiority, struck hard, gaining ground in early victories and putting the Federation in defense. Emboldened by their progress and momentum, the Empire set their sights beyond the borders of the Federation. In neighboring Gallia, a peaceful principality along the sea, they found their next victim. Gallia had long maintained its neutrality in the tensions between the two superpowers. But the rich stores of Ragnite under the Gallian soil proved too tempting for the Empire. It amassed troops along the eastern border, and invaded with all the force of an avalanche. And it is here that our story begins. Prologue. Gallia to Arms. Alright, now as you can notice here, the game starts off in a book format. As a result, we can actually look at all the cutscenes in-game as we go. <laughs> so taking breaks is an easy thing. It also means that if we missed anything in a previous cutscene, we can replay it and watch it again. The best part is, since the cutscenes are set up in small blocks, you can actually just watch, instead of watching an entire five minute video to watch one little part, you could only watch one part of it to get the part you missed. Alright, so the basic controls here, hit triangle so you can go between either chapter select, which is not available because we only have the prologue, Tab Select, which actually lets us look at other tabs, but right now there's only one episode. Save the game, which I will go on ahead and do right now. You see, like Samurai Warriors, I can save this game pretty... Unlike Samurai Warriors, I can save this game at any point, but like Samurai Warriors, I can make interim saves, which means if I'm in the middle of battle and I need to stop the game... I can make a save and stop, but unlike Samurai Warriors, if I do that, that save is just like a save file. It's permanent. It stays there. So if I make a mistake during the battle after I save and end up losing a character I don't want to lose, I can reload from that point and continue instead of losing that save file the moment I load it. Finally, if you look right there on the map, that sort of looks like a horse's head. You kind of see part of how it looks kind of like a horse's head there? Yeah, you don't, don't see it? Okay. Well, anyways, we will move on to the next cutscene, a meeting. Why, yes, I would love to watch this episode. March, 1935. Outside the Gallian border town of Brule. Residents are leaving the town before the invasion, headed inland towards the capital. I haven't been down this road in years. It really hasn't changed very much. Ready? Hey there, guys. You'll be 
beautiful. Starting early this year, you're heading upstream, huh? How's the water? Freeze! Put your hands in the air. Slowly. Haven't seen you around before. What's your name? Um, uh, my name's Welkin. And you are... The one with the gun. We're with the Brutown Watch. I'm Alicia. Alicia Melkiot. So, I'm wondering what you've been writing in that little book you've got there. Imperial spies are in the area. <laughs> this book is nothing, really. I was just sketching the fish and, uh, you know... Uh, <laughs> yes, oh, I know. And you know there's a war on, don't you? All right then, Mr. Artist. We'll talk about fish sketching down at the station. Take him away. Thanks, fish. <sighs> well, they say all great loves start with violence, I guess. Hey, she pulled the gun on him first, that's all I gotta say. Thank you. So you see, I really was just sketching. Maybe. Or, this could be some kind of secret code. And I intend to take my time finding out for sure. <sighs> Great. Welks? Is that you? Isara! Oh, your timing is perfect. What have you gotten yourself into now, Welkin? Wait. Don't you live at the old General's house? That's right. I'm General Gunther's daughter, Isara. You do know everyone's supposed to evacuate, right? Yes, I'm aware of that. My brother's here to help me move to the capital, but that may be difficult. I mean, unless you're willing to let him go, that is. Huh? <sighs> I apologize, but I was just doing my job, you know. I saw you with the notebook and thought you were a spy. Again, I'm really sorry about that. Thanks. Don't worry about it. I can see how I might have looked a little suspicious. Wilkes has a real passion for observing nature. That's why he's studying it at the university, right? Guilty as charged. I get so into it sometimes I forget where I am or that somebody might be watching me. <laughs> Gunfire! Everyone keep your heads down! Over there! through training anyway well they're probably just a small scouting team we should be able to take them out I'm with you and thus we find ourselves thrown into our very first battle and of course the game's going to tell us about saving the game but I already know how to do that <clears throat> now if you look at the map carefully or if you look at the book page here uh, carefully you'll notice that on all of the empty boxes, some of them will have that little stamp in the upper corner. That stamp means that's a battle. The rest of them are cutscenes. And I know it might seem unduly, how shall I say, savage for the Empire to kill innocent civilians like that, but there is actually a very good reason as to why they did it. I don't agree with it, hmm. but there is a good reason. So. Now that we're about to get thrown into our very first battle, the best thing we should do is go on ahead and make a quick save. 
Otherwise, the next time we uh, reload, we'll have to actually go through those two cutscenes again. And seriously, what kind of spy sits out in the open writing notes down? That's the kind of thing you do when you're, I don't know, hidden in the bush or safely out of sight or something? Alright, let's get our feet wet and get into combat. Here's the plan. Alright, so we've got a group of Imperial Scouts approaching Gruul. Let's blow from here and take them all out. There's only three of them, so this should be a pretty simple mission. Now, there is a skirmish mission that you can play later on that actually uses this particular map. Only, instead of us starting in the south and the enemy in the north, it's reversed. We start in the north and the enemy starts in the south. Yep, there's no reason to get overly hasty. So as you can see here, we have victory conditions. We win if we kill all enemies. We lose if Welkin dies, or Elysia dies, or 20 turns pass. Fortunately, it's not going to take us 20 turns to win. Hell, I'll be ashamed of myself if it takes more than five. Let's get started. Just stay calm and get it done. I see three of them. That's three too many. Stay sharp. Listen a second. There's something I should explain. Yeah, she's going to take us through combat, but I'll explain the finer points as we come up to them. She's only going to give us the basics. So first we have command points. When battle starts, you'll see a map in the air. There'll be, um... This is command mode, okay. Pretty simple so far. If you want to select a unit, simply move the cursor over to that particular unit and hit the Enter button, in this case, X. At the top of the screen, we have command points. Every time we select a unit, one command point gets used. And we can stock up those, say, we can stock up those command points for later use, too. Now, unlike most games, in this game, you can select any unit as many times as you want, as long as you have command points. So if you have one character that you really like to use, that you really want to carry the entire unit, then you can do so. I would suggest you not do so, though. Simply because if they go down, you suddenly got a squad full of people that can't do jack. Now, it says here in this battle we only have 3 CP, but we actually get 3 CP back at every turn, or uh, every round of combat. Now, as you can see, each one of these units has, and it has a little marker on them that indicates what type of unit they are. In this case, Alicia, Welkin, and Random Town Watchmen who didn't take a bullet in the gut. By the way, dude, you need to shoot from the shoulder, not from the hip, especially when you're crouched behind a barricade from that cutscene. So that little three sitting on its side indicates that these are all scout-type units. Also, you notice that there is a triangle on the edge of each circle. This indicates the direction each character is facing. This is important. As you can see right here, we have one enemy scout currently facing away from us, so we have a good chance of sneaking up on him. There are two more scout units, one here, one way up here, but both looking this direction, so that means once we cross the bridge, they'll likely open fire. Let's see. We can end the phase at this point, but I don't want to, so let's start off with Alicia, because she's actually got proper equipment. Now, about action points. Simply put, whenever you select, select a unit, they get put into action mode. When you see this, you can move the unit around freely. The thing is, they have a set amount of action points, which is displayed at the bottom of the screen. Certain units have longer gauges than others. Scouts have the longest gauge of all the class types, and thus they can move the farthest. Once their gauge runs out, they can no longer move, so whenever you attack, bear that in mind, because if you find yourself in a bad situation, you might not be able to run away. It should also be noted that if you select a unit repeatedly, each time you do, the amount of AP they have will go down. So if I move Alicia, have her kill that guy, and then end her turn, then use her again, she'll only have a quarter, she'll only have 
three-fourths of her total AP bar, and then again she'll go down to half. This will reset at the beginning of the next turn, or the beginning of the next round, but you have to bear that in mind if you're going to use the same unit over and over. They're going to stop. It's sort of like letting them catch their breath with stamina. Now, it recommends that I move up to the sandbags, and I will now. Those yellow lines, this indicates that I have spotted an enemy unit. Doesn't rev... this... it means exactly that. We've spotted an enemy unit. We can see them, they can see us, but they can't do anything to us, and we can do nothing to them. For the moment, pressing the square button will cause you to cycle through your weapons. In this case, we go from the rifle to the grenade to the Rangrid healing unit. Everyone has one of these. There is no one dedicated healing unit. Everybody can heal. Uh, L1 shows us the map of the area, our current camera orientation, not the way your character is looking, but the camera orientation. That's important. Those stripes over the mirror, that's the end of the edge. That's the edge of the map. Can't go any farther. Pressing the R1 button will put you into target mode. This will let you move around without attacking. Yes, yes, yes. I know how to aim. I will explain it. Thank you very much. All right. Since we have five shots, and what that means is that this particular unit will fire five shots every time you order her to fire. Now, the X's and O's up top means that this weapon I'm using is currently best used against anti against enemy soldiers. Against armor, not so much. Now, since I don't want to fire yet, I'm going to hit circle to exit the mode. Now, you can make your unit walk cautiously so as not to arouse suspicion. Ah, the blue line. This means I can see the enemy, but they can't see me. Perfect sneak attack opportunity. I could be wrong. I hope I'm not. You can also make your units run. It's best to make them walk, though, because there will be situations later in the game where they face things like mines. Now, at this point, the little icon ahead of me says I can leap over if I continue to press up or crouch if I press the, the, the X button. And there is actually an advantage to this, and I will explain it. Now, if you press the L1 button, you will actually cycle between different targets. Notice how it says I can take 7 shots to kill this guy if they all hit, but 28 to kill the guy that's way off there. That's because the power of the weapon drops as you, well, move. Pressing R1 also does the same thing. Now, if you aim up, though, just slightly... See how it changed? Come on. It's changed to two. I'm now aiming at his head. If I can hit him in the head two times, he goes down. And the reason I crouch down behind the barricades is that if you are crouching down behind barricades, not only will you take less damage, but the safer option being uh, not only will you not take not only will you take less damage, I'm sorry, but while you're crouching, you will not take critical damage from headshots. Now I would shoot this guy. But, uh, I don't know. I actually feel safer pitching a grenade at him. I mean, I know I could probably shoot him in the head, but there's also the chance that you will miss your shots, and if you do, well... Press the R1 button, if you're not aiming right at him, and that'll pretty much throw it at his feet. And press X to fire. You're gonna die! And at this point, I can stop. Yes, yes, yes. Now, I can no longer take any actions. I, even though I can still fire my gun, I can t even though I can select the character again, I can no longer take actions. The best thing for me to do would be to move her someplace safe and crouch down. So, we end this turn. Now that I've run you through the basics, let's go on ahead and take these guys out. Oh yeah. Now you see how it has that little icon right there, the box with the uh, slash through it? This means that I have thrown my grenade. At the beginning of each turn, each character will replenish a little bit of HP, as well as their grenades or other expendable ammo types, by one. So this means I'll have to wait till the next round of combat before I can throw grenades again. Ammunition, however, for the guns are unlimited. Welcome, you're up. Here we go.
Also, if you touch a body after it's down, it'll vanish. There's no real point to doing this, it's just something you can do. Now, I really don't want to go out too much farther. Yes, now it's going to explain about cover, which I just did. Hiding behind the cover, you'll take less damage, and you're immune to headshots and critical damage. It should be noted that every unit on the battlefield has what's called an intercept range. This means if they are standing and watching towards an enemy, and the enemy passes into their intercept range, that unit will immediately raise their gun and begin firing, allowing them to do damage. It is entirely possible to kill enemy units using three or four of your own units set up in such a way that they have to walk through a crossfire. So you have to actually take bear in mind the position of where you're going to be whenever your turn ends. So, until I get everyone else up here, I am probably not going to advance much farther than this. Now, I'm not too keen on him being up there long, so I'm actually going to go on ahead and... You know what? I'm going to leave this town watchman down here. I am going to save this command point and move on to the next turn and let the enemy do their thing. The enemy may or may not come at me, I don't know. Now the camera position will actually move in strange ways. If you, if one of your units has a line of sight on an enemy movement... Aha! See how we move, how we fired like that? But as I said, if one of your units has line of sight of an enemy move, of an enemy unit, as they're moving along the battlefield, you'll switch to their perspective and look right at them as they're moving so you know where they are. If, however, the enemy moves outside of the range of vision of any of your units, no, none of your units can see them, it turns back to the map view and their movements are hidden. Yes, it was just, it's just saying that you can use the same unit multiple times. Of course, people get tired, and they start with less AP each time you use them in the same round. Right, and they were just talking about how the CP that you save at the end of a previous round will carry over to the next round. So in this case, instead of starting with three, I now have four! Now I am in a bit of trouble here. I'm gonna go ahead and pull Alicia up. You see again, she has her grenades back. That's good. The damage done... No, no, don't end her turn. The damage done by Welkin during that last round of combat has likely been healed up. This is a little risky what I'm doing. Alright, I think I can get him. One thing to remember is, whenever you fire like this, there is a chance that the enemy will duck, and because one of his buddies is standing right behind him, if he does duck, I'll end up hitting him instead. There it is. Critical damage. Whew. The other thing to note is, if your character is inside the intercept range of an enemy unit when their turn is over, when they stop firing, immediately hit the cancel button to get them out of their turn, because as long as your character is inside enemy intercept range, the enemy will continue to shoot until you move out of intercept range, or they kill you. You don't want that to happen. The enemy won't give you that chance, don't give them the same chance. Now, I'm going to go ahead and have Welk here finish this fool off. Ow, ow, with the bullets! A little more light. Now, you can use the left analog stick to aim broadly, and then you can use the directional buttons to actually carefully aim. Well, as you can see, Welk in here is, um... Not a very good shot just yet, but that's quite alright. I'll give you another go, Welkin, but only because... Do you even have grenades? No, I'm not even sure. You do not, because you are not a soldier. Alright, let's see if you can actually hit this guy standing right here. Just say, if you can't, I'm gonna be ashamed of you, man. 
pretty easy way to get into the game. I don't see any more of them. Yeah, it took us two turns. Technically, if we had been reckless, we pr if I had used just one character, say Alicia, and been reckless, there's a good chance I would have been able to finish them off in one round. So we got experience, and we got something called... Uh, uh, we got money. I'm not sure what the name of the um, currency is. It's DT. I want to say Drachma, but I don't think that's right. And then from here, we go on into the next cutscene, I believe. Or not. Now, the thing is, unlike previous episodes... Oh, wait, no. I'm sorry, I was wrong before. Unlike previous episodes, once you finish a battle, you can't go back and do it again. Not unless you go into skirmish mode. And that little icon there... That actually indicates that the scene is new. What I got wrong was, whenever you look at a blank scene, the way that's blank like that, but you can sort of see it, if you see a map, then that means that you have a battle coming. So before we end the video, let's watch the last episode and the first part of the prologue. There's no other sign of the enemy. Good. Now, go keep watch and stay alert. Yes, ma'am. Uh, what should we do with the bodies, ma'am? We'll bury them. So it's begun. I'll do whatever it takes to protect the people of this town. I'll do it. Even going to war, I'll do it. Seeds from the lion's paw. It blooms white, small, simple, and strong. I want to be able to remember, once the war is over, that it wasn't all just people killing people. That even in war, there was also new life. On the 15th day, of the third month of the year 1935, the Empire began its assault in earnest. A formal declaration of war was made upon Gallia. Though it was only a small front in a massive continental assault, what followed would prove that a tiny nation could best a military giant. These events would tell a story of tragedy hidden in the mists of time. A story of courage and of trust, of persecution and hate, and of love blooming even through the flames of war. What follows is a record of this conflict and of those who fought, lived, and died. Chapter 1, In Defense of Bruel.